Hi you guys, I'm Cami Garcia. I am the co-author of the Beautiful Creatures series and the Dangerous Creatures series. And I am the author of the Legion series, uh, the X-Files Origins, Agent of Chaos. Last year I came out with my first contemporary standalone which was called The Lovely Reckless. And today I'm gonna talk to you about my new book that just came out. It's called Broken Beautiful Hearts. And it's also um, a standalone contemporary. Jennifer Niven said really nice things about it, which was like so exciting, I cannot even tell you. She said, as I read this, I fell in love. Genuine, shattering, deep, heart-pounding love. Jennifer Niven, look right there. She's so awesome. Okay, so I have to have a paper because there are a lot of questions here. And I am forgetful. I'm trying to like, I have a bad lighting situation in here and I'm leaving for tour, so I'm trying to like do this so everyone can see me. Um, so this is called uh, Between Two Lockers. And um, so in my author's note, um, I mentioned that some of the, the details of the situations were inspired by um, things that really happened to me. And the question from uh, Forever Young Adult is, what made me decide to tell Peyton's story now? And I actually just did um, a first person essay for Seventeen Magazine. Uh, you can, I'm sure I have it on my Facebook page where, you know, I put anything exciting. And um, it's actually the story of what really happened. But when I was in uh, high school, I dated an athlete, like Peyton, my main character. She's dating an athlete. And um, I found out that he was using steroids, performance enhancing drugs. And um, I broke up with him immediately because uh, he had been lying to me about it. And also, um, I'm not a huge fan of drugs. I'm a stepdad's a cop. Um, and he, I mean, now I know a lot more about, you know, steroids than I did at the time since I wasn't using them. And he flew into like, you know, a roid rage and he ended up pushing me through a door. Um, like through a door. It was, I mean, it was a screen door, but it wasn't like, I mean, it had like a frame. And um, it was at a party. And I, you know, it was really shocking, number one, because when you go out with someone for a long time, obviously like you have arguments, things happen. And nothing like that had ever happened before. Um, I'd never had any guy, I mean, I have four brothers and they've tried to push me around and then I would usually just beat them. But, you know, I'd never had a guy like purposely try to hurt me. And I'm, I was, I am, and I was a relatively tough girl. So I could fight, like, you know, I could defend myself, but you know, this guy was a better fighter than me. <laughs> so, um, after I broke up with him, I didn't tell anyone which was a huge, huge mistake. Um, I was embarrassed because like I said, I, you know, I had a reputation for being able to take care of myself. I felt like I, you know, I didn't. And I also was like, I really felt like I could handle it. You know, like I was an, almost an adult. I could deal with it myself. I didn't need to involve my parents. And I certainly wasn't gonna tell my brothers because, you know, that would involve them going to find this person and possibly getting, you know, beaten up. So, but I did have people I could have told. I could have told my, my, I have, you know, I have my mom, my dad, my stepdad, my stepmom, my, um, you know, my friends. I was close to a lot of my friends' moms. Like I had a lot of adults I could have gone to and I didn't. And then he started following me around and stalking me and showing up places and it got, you know, like more intense and way more scary. And by that time, like, pro I mean, like, several months had gone by. So by the time it became clear that I couldn't handle it, it stop. Sorry, those are my bad dogs. I it became like, how do you go and, you guys, seriously, I'm doing an interview. They're so bad. Um, and they always do this. Quiet. That's the teacher voice. Sorry. Um, several months went by, and by the time I realized that I couldn't handle it, um, 
I felt really weird going to my parents because what was I going to say? Um, this guy like threw me through a door and has been threatening me and calling me and following me around, but I didn't tell you until now. Um, you know, and I was like, that's, that was worse. So, um, I stuck it out. Eventually someone intervened and it stopped, but it was a really long time after when it started. And, you know, if you read the article, it talks more about like how it affected me, but it's all the way I handled it has always bothered me or the way I didn't handle it. And I know it wasn't my fault, but still like, I, I also know that I was lucky enough to have people that would have helped me if I had asked. And if I didn't, you know, feel, I wasn't worried about being embarrassed and I had understood that it wasn't my fault and I should just tell someone and get someone to help me. So, you know, and this was like 27 years ago. So when I got the idea for the book, it was almost like I wanted a do-over. Like I wanted to be able to rewrite my, like the, my history, what happened and do things the way I wish I had done them then. Um, because one of the things is books have always been super important to me and like a lifeline. And, you know, I read like Judy Bloom and like all these books that the outsiders that really, I really connected with, but there was no book like about something like this that I could have read, you know, not for a teen. And I felt like I wanted to have to do it over and Peyton makes mistakes, but she tells people, which was really important to me. I wanted to do it over the right way. And so I hope that's what I did in the book. And I hope that if there is someone like me who is not sure what to do or how to tell people that maybe the book will help. Um, it says, uh, uh, and, and actually I think I kind of answered the next question because it's about the fact that like right now it's like a very big cultural moment of empowerment for women. And what do I hope they take away from it? And what I hope, you know, they take away from it is the fact that like, you know, it's not their fault. You all, you should tell someone, you should report it. Um, you know, people, whether it's someone, whether it's domestic violence, whether someone's, you know, using drugs, like whatever the cause of someone, you know, being violent toward you, it's not your fault and it's potentially dangerous. Like you don't know what that person's gonna do. So you need to ask for help and I feel like now it's even, you know, like it's easier to do because there's all these women coming out, you know, and talking about Me Too and um, telling their stories. And there's more people who are listening and believing, which is the most important part. And, you know, whether you're a mom or, you know, a single person or a young person watching this, like if someone tells you something like this happens, please believe them. Um, it's very embarrassing and awkward and there's a lot of like shame involved most people it's not like a fun thing to make up um so most if people t come to you like they're telling the truth and you should try to you know either help them or steer them in the right direction where they can get help many of the characters in broken beautiful hearts are athletes peyton is a soccer player read um then says there's some i'm editing out spoilers there's some fighters the, the twins who are her cousins are football players are you a sports fan? Did you play uh, any sports when I was in school? I did not really play sports. Um, I did martial arts and I am a big fan. I don't love watching sports. Um, I like watching basketball if I'm at a game. Um, I love um, martial arts and MMA. I love boxing, um, like high level boxing, not like, you know, beating each other like to a pulp boxing. Um, I love, uh, I love the Olympics. Like. I'm not that I was in the Olympics, but like I love the Olympics. I love like figure skating and gymnastics. I like watching stuff that I can't do. Um, but I don't like watching, like I'm not a huge sports fan like where I have to be home to watch a certain game or anything like that. I'm more like that with TV shows. Uh, Peyton lives in Washington, D.C. and feels crazy out of place when she moves to cowboy boot wearing football loving town of Blackwater, Tennessee. Did you grow up in a small town or a big city? Yeah, I totally want to address this because I read a review, um, which I don't usually do, but I was looking for my friend's review. And so, like, of course, I stumbled on some other review talking about the stereotypes of the South, which, you know, it's funny because I, my family's from the South. And, you know, like, Abby Glines, who bl blurred the book, is it lives in Alabama. Like, most of my friends are in the South and all read this book. And the stereotypes that are there are there for a reason. 
like they're funny and they're you know part of the twins journey is that they're raised by their dad their mom died when they were young and they are kind of like little chauvinist and it's not because they're southern they're just like they think they're you know they think they're being polite and that they're being protective and helping Peyton and other girls you know you know by looking out for them and it kind of takes Peyton living with them to show them that like girls don't need protecting and um you know a girl a woman can open the door for them just as easily as they can open the door for a girl so uh i did not grow up in a small town i grew up right outside of washington dc which is where the book starts and a lot of my books start a lovely reckless is totally set there and um and then like i said my family's from the south they're from north carolina you know, Margie and I wrote about um, South Carolina a ton and uh, Savannah and different places in the South and beautiful creatures. And I love Tennessee and it seemed like a fun, it has all these old mills and abandoned buildings and cool places and it has really good food. So my hope is always that like they're gonna, which they are, they're gonna send me to the place that the book is about. So now I'm gonna get to go to Nashville, which is one of my favorite places ever. And I'm gonna eat barbecue and hang out with readers. Um, I'm not sure when this is, is going live because I got two hours of sleep, but my tour starts tomorrow, which is February 6th. And um, if you go on my socials, if it's not posted here, you can see where I'm going and where my public events are. I'm doing a lot of school visit events because of the nature of the book, because uh, I really want to reach out to teens. But I am doing some public events. I hope you will come. Now it says, um, the real, if, uh, these are the real life YA questions. This is terrifying. Like it's way easier to do this because then in writing, because then if you don't like it, you can erase. Um, uh, what would you, the main character, be like? I was a broody, kind of angsty teen. I had kind of the same haircut except for this side was shaved and then this side was really long. So it was kind of like flock of seagulls. I'll see if I can find a picture to send them. Um, I wore like a lot of rings and bracelets and like, you know, black and, um, you know, I was, but I wasn't like goth or like fringe. Like I had friends and stuff and not that there's anything wrong with being goth, but I was like, that was just kind of like my uniform. And, but I was angsty. I wrote like angsty poetry and, um, you know, I was moody. Um, who was your secret crush? Matt Dillon from The Outsiders, like Dallas Winston. Like he and I were gonna get married and it was gonna be awesome. Uh, what is your number one source of angst back then? Oh my gosh, I don't even know. Guys, um, not like I was guy crazy. I was more, um, I was kind of, I'm talking about now, like, you know, before I dated the person who pushed me around. Um, I was like, I had four brothers who, you know, like fed me a lot of like misinformation to make sure that I wasn't, you know, like getting into trouble or, you know, like getting myself into situations I couldn't handle. And um, so my brothers were a big source of angst because they were like always spying on me and like two of them live with me. They were always spying on me. One was younger, you know, like. We found out he, we had a big hill at my grandmother's house. He was like, and I, he's seven years younger than me. So, I, you know, I was 17, he was like 10. He was like charging the little boys in the neighborhood to like watch me and my friends walk around getting dressed like luckily in our jeans and in like a bra tank top. But still, I don't want my 10 year old brother making money off of me and my bra. Um, so my brothers were a huge source of angst. They're a big pain. I love them all now um, and we're all really close. But when you're growing up like, and you have to share the Millennium Falcon, they were a pain. Um, at what point would the reader pump his or her fist in victory? There are a lot of them. Um, I mean, I think that a reader would, uh, looking back, uh, I wasn't a very good, like I was good at telling people what I thought and, you know, giving people peace of my mind, but not when it really counted, not like if someone really hurt me or it was really like. You know, like when, like when it mattered, um, but I was really good and I am still really good at defending my friends and my family and anyone like who can't defend themselves. Um, I, 
I had, you know, freshmen that ate lunch at my table. We were allowed to go off campus. It's a terrible idea, but, you know, like, I had freshmen who ate lunch at my table even when I was a senior because, like, you know, they were skaters or whatever, and, you know, like, there weren't that many skaters, and they got beat up all, like, one of them was very small, I swear. He looked like he was in, like, seventh grade, and he was in, like, ninth or tenth grade. And for me, like, bullying, like, for, I guess... You know, and it was worse after the incident happened because knowing what it feels like, I was also very small um, in elementary, always. Like, I was the one who sat next to the little sign with the class name and everything every year. And people picked on me for that. And luckily, I was, you know, I was, I had brothers and my stepdad's a cop and I knew how to defend myself. But there, that feeling of knowing what it's like to be picked on or to feel threatened and know that you can't do anything about it, like that really bothered me. Because I would think about like, oh my gosh, you know, like when people do that to me, you know, in my neighborhood or whatever, like how would it feel if I, if I, if I couldn't defend myself? Like if I knew I couldn't say anything back or they'd hurt me. Um, so I defended a lot of people, um, girls, you know, with, you know, rowdy, drunk boyfriends, like, who were in situations that they couldn't handle. I just, um, I don't know. I felt like, I was like, you know, like Batman with no good equipment and no outfit. Um, but I'm also really loyal. I still am. Um, I can totally handle it if someone says something about me, but don't talk about my friends. Um, like, my friends are amazing people. My writer, you know, well-known friends and my friends I grew up with who have, you know, are moms and have regular jobs and, you know, don't go on Twitter all the time. And, um, you know, once, if somebody goes out of their way for me or, um, you know, is a kind person, like, and someone's talking about them, I will say something. And I also, like, my, I always talk, say this at high schools. You know, um, the biggest sign of cowardice in the world is to talk about someone behind their back when you wouldn't say the same thing to their face. You're basically advertising to someone that you are a complete coward with no character. So to me, if I have something to say about somebody, and it doesn't matter if they're like, you know, famous, it could be just like, you know, one of my friends in my neighborhood. If I have something to say, I don't say it, I'll, I don't say it to anyone if I'm not, I wouldn't be able to say it to that person. Because I always assume someone could find out and I always like, and I'm not going to lie. So I better, like, if I can't say it to the person, I keep my mouth shut. That's kind of, and then I just like think, you know, feel disgruntled in my head. But, um, that's the biggest thing. And I don't turn my back on my friends. I don't care if they're embroiled in some kind of drama online or controversy or whatever. Like, you know, if I know the real deal and, you know, they're right and they didn't do anything, I don't care if it. I get dragged through the mud with them, like I will stand by them. And I hope they would, you know, the, my friends that I have known for a long time, I know they would do that for me. Um, but I would do it regardless. So I think that's what it means to be a friend. Um, it's easy to be a friend when things are going great. You know, it's harder to be a friend when you're in an argument and then something happens and someone's, you know, talking about your friend, your friend is an emergency and, you know, you have to drop everything and forget about your nonsense and, you know, be there for them. Like when the chips are down, that's when it matters. Um, who would play me in the film adaptation? Probably one of the flock of seagulls. Like, I have no idea. Um, someone who was willing to cut their hair in like that really weird style and like shave half of it. Um, someone really, really short. I was like 4'11 when I graduated high school. Slumber party questions, my secret power. Um, I stay calm and think really fast in dangerous and scary situations. Because my stepdad was an undercover cop and there was, if you read The Lovely Reckless, there was a lot of at-home training. Uh, my number one favorite food. I really love um, hot fudge sundaes, but like if I had to have one food to survive on forever, I could live on pizza easily. And I'm like an equal opportunist. Like I love, you know, New York, thin crust, I like deep dish, you name it. If it's pizza, as long as it doesn't have vegetables on it, I like it. Uh, my area of expertise. I don't know if I have an area of expertise. I was a really great teacher. Um, I'm a good cook and baker. 
Um, so I think maybe cooking would be like something that I would, um, I'm good at that I'd be able to show other people how to do. There are some videos on my YouTube channel of me baking, teaching you how to bake things that I did during Beautiful Creatures. Um, if I could assemble my own Ocean's Eleven of fictional characters, who would I pick and why? Eleven? I don't even know. Um, this one seems hard. I think I definitely, I definitely would choose, um, always choose Dallas Winston from The Outsiders because he's incredibly loyal and fierce and he'll like do anything for anyone. Um, I think I would choose Katniss because she's very industrious and like resourceful and quiet. Like she like sneaks around and is able to, you know, like fly under the radar. I would totally have Snape because he's like, I mean, he's like the ultimate in espionage and um, always, you know, like he, that he's a, that's some serious loyalty. Um, I'm trying to think of some of my favorite books. Uh, I think I would love to have, I'm trying to think of books that are just like, I'm trying to think of YA books. Um, I like Eleanor from Eleanor and Park. I think Eleanor's cool and, um, I don't know if she would necessarily be picking any locks on my Ocean's Eleven team, but, uh. I feel like, she, you know, she would be good to have around because she's like, you know, she's solid, um, good person. I would definitely have Cruz, who's from my book, The Lovely Reckless, because she is um, the fastest street uh, streetcar racer in the Downs. And like, I'm assuming if there's Ocean's Eleven, we might need a getaway car. I think that's four. I'm so bad at math. Um, I think... Five, I love Magnus Bain from um, Cassie Clare's uh, Mortal Instruments and the Bain Chronicles. Um, Magnus and his magic and his like fabulous like demeanor and like handsome, just handsome face and fun parties seem like he could be very useful. I think that's only five. I don't even know I'm gonna come up with 11 because um, I'm totally blanking on everyone's name. I love, uh, I love Day from the, from Legend and he's like, you know, the most wanted criminal in, you know, the land. So I feel like he definitely has some skills. I also love, um, I love Snow from Stealing Snow, Danielle, um, Page's book. She, she is, um, she seems kind of like quiet and meek in the beginning and she's totally not. She like figures out what's going on and she like has to enter another world and like claim her place and come up against big magic. I, um, I definitely would want, I think Gandalf, like I have to have Gandalf because he's Gandalf, you know, Gandalf the gray, Gandalf the white, like I'll, either way, I'll take any of them. Um, I don't even know. Maybe that's nine. I probably need a con man, right? So I think I would take Castle from um, Collie Black's White Cat, the uh, Curse Worker series. Um, he's a good con man. So I'll take Castle. And then I need another, like, uh, like another kick-ass girl. I'm trying to think. Um, I mean, obviously, I would always take Lena or Ridley from Beautiful Creatures. I feel like Ridley's very useful. She has the power of persuasion. You know, she's foxy and flirty. Um, and let's just hope that's 11. Maybe there's, maybe I'm 11. So then that, I have the right number. Uh, who, let's see. Um, my best karaoke song. There's no best karaoke song with me. Um, the best karaoke song is the song I'm not singing. I'm a terrible singer. Um, but the first song my daughter knew that I taught my daughter was We Will Rock You by Queen. And like, I mean, at least the chorus doesn't take a lot of skill. So I can probably pull that off. Um, tell me something scandalous. I don't know. I can't ride a bike. I mean, I don't know if that's scandalous, but in my family it is. It's like everyone's like astounded. 
but I can't ride a bike. I've never been able to. I mean, I can ride one with training wheels, but at this point, you know, I'm like 46, almost 46. I don't really want training wheels. Um, my, my son told me they make a big giant tricycle I could ride. Um, my favorite adult beverage. Probably a pina colada, like anything that you, you know, blend with ice. That tastes fruity. Um, what book have I read the most number of times? The Outsiders, for sure. Like, no, no doubt. Uh, my freebie. I don't have a freebie anymore. Once I started traveling and, like, would go places where I would actually see people. But my freebie used to be Sam Elliott, who I love, um, from, like, the time, especially when he was in, like, The Mask with Cher. And he was, like, younger. But I, also, I really love his voice. He has a really deep voice, and I have a deep voice, so I like people who have deeper voices than me. Um, YA authors are so cool. Who would you give a BFF charm to? Well, obviously Margie, who's been, who was my best friend for like 11 years before we wrote Beautiful Creatures. Um, Danielle Page, who I adore. She, I talk to her like almost every day. She could definitely have a BFF charm. There's, but there's like so many people. Like I have so many friends and they're all so great. Um, I feel like maybe we would just all get a matching tattoo. Uh, Abby Glines is a really good friend of mine. Um, Jamie McGuire, uh, Danielle Clayton. Like, there's, there's so many. That's the cool thing about YA is there's so many nice authors, you know, that are like, um, you know, will help you. Holly Black is one of my favorite people in the world. Carrie Ryan, she helps me with the reads. Of, you know, all my books when they're really bad. Uh, her and Holly read them and try to help me fix them up. <laughs> Uh, out of all the creatures, uh, sorry, out of the creatures, out of all the characters I've written, which one do you most wish you could be? I think I would be Ama from Beautiful Creatures because, um, for people who actually read the series, uh, she is like the most powerful person in the series. She's based on, a uh, kind of a mismatch between Margie's grandmother and my great grandmother. And, um, She's a seer, you know, she can read cards and she knows things, she's wise, and she's a really good cook. So, like, I feel like I would definitely be Alma. Um, if I was invited to an FYA slumber party, what pajamas would I wear? And what crucial snack would I bring? I don't know. If I can't wear sweats, I would probably wear, like, those button-down pajamas that have, like, pictures on them. You know, if I had a choice, mine would probably have, like, Buffy the Vampire Slayer theme. Um, now my phone's ringing. This is what it's like at my house all the time. Uh, and my crucial snack. I like chocolate covered peanuts. I like, um, I, I'm like, I'm like Lena, but instead of liking milk duds and popcorn, I like chocolate covered peanuts and popcorn. And I would have whatever drink I had would have to have tons and tons of ice in it because I, I am really invested in ice. Mash, please provide three options for each category. Um, a spouse, Spike from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Um, Jace from The Mortal Instruments. Or uh, Peta from, from um, The Hunger Games. I wouldn't pick Peta, but I'm just saying, like, we have to have options. Honeymoon. Um, Tahiti, Tahiti, Greece, with history, or how about somewhere cold, or Alaska in the wintertime, like on some expedition. Number of kids, two, one, or four. Job, uh, writer, novelist, which, whichever you want to call it. Um... A race car driver, professional, so you get the perks. Or um, or a designer, and it may it could be any kind of designer, like an architect, clothing, fashion designer, some kind of designer. Income, uh, let's say, I don't know exactly if I'm supposed to provide numbers, so let's say um, not much, just enough, or a lot. Um, hometown. Let's say um, 
in honor of the book, I made up the town in um, Broken Beautiful Hearts, but it's kind of near Knoxville. So let's say Knoxville, Tennessee, Los Angeles, California, or um, New York. Pet. A cat, a dog, or a fancy rat. If you don't know what a fancy rat is, you need to find out. My sister has them. They're very cute. Uh, car. How about a um, Dodge uh, Challenger, which is what I had. Um, a beater, like Link Drives in BC, which basically means like a big hunk of junk. Um, or a how about something like more of luxury-esque? I don't know a ton about like fancy cars. How about like some kind of nice BMW? I'm assuming that's good, right? Okay, I think I did it all. I hope that wasn't too boring. I hear my dogs are about to misbehave. Um, my dogs are Spike and Oz, named after characters from Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and they're really bad. But um, I hope if you have a chance, you read Broken Beautiful Hearts. I hope that if you are anywhere near, I know I'm doing an event in St. Charles. I'm doing an event in um, Nash, well, outside of Nashville. I'm doing an event in um, Cincinnati. Um, I'm blanking, but like, if I'm, I know I'm doing festivals too, but like, if you're nearby, come and say hi. I'm not scary. I would love to hang out. And um, please follow me on Facebook and Instagram. And I'll try to, you know, like post pictures and stuff from the tour and show you what we're doing. Uh, thank you to Forever Young Adult for having me and letting me make my um, video. I apologize again for yelling at my dogs if anyone heard that, but they're unruly. So you have to like yell at them once and then they calm down. So, um, bye bye. Thank you.